And this episode is brought to you by Linda.com. Hey, you're watching Swerve on YouTube and this is episode 6 of Slow Mo Mondays and today I'm going to be showing you the process of making a logo for a client. So before you even begin the logo, you need to have your meet and greet. A meet and greet is basically a talk session where you can ask as many questions to your client as possible just so you can get a vague idea of what you're going to do for their logo. So questions would consist of, you know, what's the name of your brand, um, the history behind your brand and list three things that represent your business. So when you ask questions like that, you get an idea in your mind of what you're going to do for the logo even before you started. So that's basically a rough, you know, explanation of the meet and greet. So the next stage we're going to move on to is the brainstorm stage. So check out for that and I'll see you on the other side. All right, so welcome to the brainstorm process and the brand name is City Heist London. So at this point, I like to play a little game of word associations and I'm going to get my text tool quickly. And when I think of city, I think of buildings. So we've got buildings and when I think of buildings, I think bold and tall. Alright, so we've got our first word association. Um, we can then continue with heists. And the first thing that comes to my mind is criminals. And then I kind of think of um, a criminal is sly and sharp. So sly and sharp it is. Right, so these are just simple words. I didn't do London because London is a city and it's based around buildings and bold and tall and stuff like that. So at this point, you can either go to Google or get, um, what can I say, stock images based around the associations that we came up with. So what you'll be looking for is buildings or criminal and you'll take different aspects from the image to make your logo. So I'm going to paste the image that I got. And the reason I chose this image is because it really links and resonates with the word associations that we have on the side. So it's a building, it's tall and it's bold and it's sharp. So, you know, pick an image that actually links to the words that you're doing. So now that I look at this building, I kind of think that I want the logo to be based around a building and the shape just looks really nice. So I'm going to use that as well. So check out for next stage, which is going to be line work. And we're going to make the outline for our logo. So I'll see you then. All right. So here we are at the line work stage. And I said I was going to base my line work around the building on the left. So I'm going to create the center point. And what I'm going to do is create the slant of the roof like that. And I'm going to make a copy. So I'm going to drag it down, holding alt. And I'm going to go to transform, reflect and click OK. All right. So now that I've done that, I can select both of them and drag them to the other side. And I'm going to flip it again, go and transform, reflect. And what I'm going to do is flip it horizontally. Actually, sorry about that. I'm going to flip it vertically and click OK. And at this point, we can now get our center line and make a copy and drag it out like that and make another copy to the other side like that and move it in a bit. All right, so that's pretty much perfect. This is like the outline of the building. So I need to do a few more things. So I'm gonna select these two strokes and hold control G to merge it and do the same to the bottom. And I'm gonna make a copy and drag up like so. 
and I'm going to do the same above as well, making sure it clicks. Awesome. So now we've pretty much done the outline. We can now focus on the next stage, which is going to be typography. Talking about typography, if you want to learn how to make awesome text and crazy illustrations, then check out lynda.com because they have a lot of courses that can teach you how to do all of that and more. If you want to learn how to make a website, they have that. If you want to learn how to code, they have that. And if you want to learn how to learn, well, they have that also. So check out lynda.com, check the link in the description if you want a 10 day free trial. And you know, if you like what you see, then you have a chance to become an exclusive member for £14.95 a month. That's pretty much a bargain. All right, so now that I've got that off my chest, it's time to move on to the next stage, the logo design. Right, finally, but not least, we've got the logo design and to begin with, we need to start with a little reference and this is City Highest London. So instead of using the full words, I'm going to use an abbreviation. So CHL. And I'm going to put this up here just for reference. So looking at that text, I'm thinking, how about we start with the H first? So we're going to get the rectangle tool. And I like to use this for text or anything that I'm doing because it just gives it more precision when I'm working. Um, if it was more script, I would use um, a pen tool. All right, so I'm going to select these two lines and move it so it centers. So it's going to click into the center. All right, that's perfect. Um, I think that gap's a bit too small but actually it's pretty good. So I'm going to leave it like that. And as you can see, there's gaps between each letter. So to create that gap and make it equal throughout, what I'm going to do is get a square and make a little gap like that. And I'm going to change the color to red just to tell me not to go there. I'm going to move it to the other side as well. Hold an alt and drag. All right. And I'm going to select both of the beams because I want the inside gap of the letters to be the same throughout. So I'm going to drag again like that and do the same again. All right. So if we look at the C and the H, we'll notice that the C has a line there and a line there and a gap in the middle and the L has a line here and the H has a line through the middle. So I'm going to create the first line and then we'll see what we do for the others. All right. So I'm going to do that like that. And for this one, I'm going to do the same again. All right. Perfect. Now for the H, I'm going to drag this holding alt and move it to the center. And for the L, I'm going to create the line as well. All right. So we've got a bit of excess points that we need to get rid of. So I'm going to hold control A and go to the shape builder tool and hold Alt and click on the areas I don't want. Right, so to create a gap in the C, we want it to be uniform. So I'm going to hold Alt and drag this piece over just to create a cut. And I'm going to cut through it using the shape builder tool again. And I'm going to move this point a bit down and these points as well. A bit up. All right, that's perfect. And we can get rid of these gaps and move the H down a bit. All right. So the L is looking like a U. So I need to move these points down to somewhere around here. Maybe level with the C. Yeah, maybe level with the C just to keep it uniform. And what do I want to do? I think it looks good like that. 
All right, so um, now that we've got the shape of our letters, so we've got the C, the H, and the L, now it's time to add some, you know, some nice bits and details. So what we're going to do is create a point like that using the pencil, just like that. In fact, actually, delete that, what we can do to keep it more precise, we could use a square and then we could rotate it, holding shift. All right, so we're going to drag and make sure it centers right about here. All right, that's perfect. And I'm going to do the same. Actually, no, I'm just going to keep it on the C because C is the criminal. And I'm going to create a fill over here. And I'm going to fill this side as well, just so it's not too harsh. All right. And I'm going to make a kind of ornament kind of thing on this side. All right, so now I can use this piece for um, all the other shapes. So for the L, I'm going to move it to that side as well in due time. I think that looks nice. And I'm going to hold Alt, drag up, and transform, reflect, and whoops, wrong way around. I'm going to reflect horizontally. Perfect. And as you can see, it's actually picking up, you know, detail and it's got its own personality now. Um, let me see. All right. So from here, we can use the pen tool and create a sharp point like that and close it around here. And then we can do the same, but do it the opposite way like that bit down and close it off here. So if you look at that, you can see it gave it a more edgy look. So now it looks more like a criminal and more bold and sharp and stuff like that. So it looks more aggressive now. There's more things we could do, like we could move this ornament over here to the L, holding Alt and make sure it clicks in like that and I'm thinking we could do a bit more but I'm trying to think where to add the extra detail all right so let me try this quickly I'm gonna create a sharp point over here oops that's making it look like a G all right so I'm gonna learn never to do that again um, in fact, let's get rid of the line work and see how it looks without the lines. So let's select all of this in the layers panel. All right. So we can see where the lines are. I'm going to select that and that and delete. All right. So, whoa, that's looking really nice. Um, I think that's pretty much near finished. Pretty much. All we need to do is add text below. So this is going to be City Heist London. So City Heist London. I'm going to make City Heist in bold. And London quite, um, let's see. Yeah, let's keep it like that and reduce it down a bit more. Right, that's looking really nice. Um, I'm going to add the right sign. Hold an Alt and R. If you're on a Mac, it works like that. If you're on a window, I'm not sure um, what, this, what the keys are to get this symbol, but 
I'm sure I can find out for you and leave it in the comment section. Right, so we've got City Heist. City Heist London looks really nice. All right, so I'm going to delete the reference and I'm going to stand back and really look at it to see what we can add or change. And right now I'm feeling really satisfied with the final result. And I'm going to leave it like this. Alright, so I'm going to move this to the side and what I love to do when making a logo is make different variations. So we've got this variation and what we can now do is make a copy, Control C, Control F and group it, so Control G and then open up the layers and what you want to do is hide that. So if you make a change, you'll have something to go back to. Right, so I'm going to select all of this and hold Alt and drag to the side. Right, so now what I can do is highlight all this text and go to the Pathfinder and merge it together. And I'm going to make another copy. So Control C, Control F, Control Shift and move it to the back using the square brackets key. And I'm going to change this text to white and I'm going to go to the bottom layer which is the layer we just pushed back and I'm going to increase the stroke just to see how it looks. All right so that's looking pretty sweet. Um, let me see. I'm going to make a random shape just make sure it fills up that gap and I'm going to move it to the back holding control shift and the square bracket key just so we can fill out that gap in the back. So now we have two concepts that our, our client can look at and they may pick the first one, they may pick the second one, but at least they have two choices to pick from and two variations. So that's the end of this episode. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe and comment and I'll see you next week.